Recently, Mercedes released their Project One hypercar. It's essentially a road-going car with more or less a Formula One powertrain. In this video, we're going to discuss and analyze its rather complicated suspension setup. Now, the suspension setup is quite an interesting one on this car. To start with, you'll notice that all our suspension arms are not actually double A arms. If you look at the outboard mounts, you'll see that they're actually single linkage arms. Each arm is just a pure tension and compression link. There's no link between the arms forming double A arms, which is an interesting choice from Mercedes. The suspension actuation is performed via these push rods, which go into bell cranks, and these bell cranks then allow the dampers at the top and bottom to be actuated. One of the big advantages of this system is, is that you don't need to worry about any damper mounts. You only need to worry about these bell crank mounts and the rest of the system is sort of purely contained within the bell crank. This means that you don't need to worry as much about your sort of structural mounting to the chassis and it should save a little bit of weight on not having to triangulate huge amount of chassis structure. So to understand the suspension on the Project 1, we first have to understand what we're trying to achieve with suspension on any performance car. Now every car encounters a whole bunch of different modes that it can work under. So for example, Roll is one mode. So as we turn a corner, the car body tries to roll. This forces one wheel to go up and the other to go down. This is just one mode of the car. Another one is pitch, where under braking, the car tries to rotate forwards. And this causes the front wheels to go up while the rear wheels go down. We can also think about the total four wheel heave of the vehicle. If you consider something like the downforce force, it causes all four wheels of the car to go upwards with respect to the chassis. Now the tricky thing about these modes is that they all require different springing and damping characteristics. For example, if you have a car with a lot of downforce, you're going to generally want a high heave stiffness, but you want your roll stiffness to be relatively low as it will give you back a little bit more mechanical grip. With conventional car springs, if we would say have no anti-roll bar and just have a spring on each wheel, we can see that the springs relate not just the direct bump stiffness of the wheel, but also the relative roll stiffness is changed as well. Because the entire way a car can resist roll here is by having force reduced off one spring and increased on the other during roll. So we can see that if we want to tune our roll mode separately to our bump mode, we need to introduce something like an anti-roll bar. The problem with an anti-roll bar is that it doesn't have any sort of damping. So if you don't have any damping on there, you can't control it. And each mode requires different springing and damping characteristics. So we can see that it's desirable for a car that has springing and damping control in both a heave or bump mode and in a roll mode. And this is predominantly what the Project One suspension setup aims to achieve. Now that that's out of the way, let's go back and discuss the mechanical specifics of the suspension on the Project One. Okay, so let's say we apply a bump load to both wheels. So we basically put a load up through the push rods. Now this can be either sort of a load from the, um, the downforce pressing down on the suspension, or it can be a combined bump on both wheels. That will cause these bell cranks to rotate in this direction. Now once that happens, we'll end up with our top damper being loaded in compression that way. Meanwhile on the bottom, this arm moves that way, that arm moves from the rotation that way. So this whole bottom damper gets a net movement that way. Whereas this suffers compression on its spring and damping section. So that way, this entire damper here is only taking the mode that is bump on both wheels. Now let's take the case of pure roll. Now in roll, we end up with one wheel that's being forced downwards and the other one that will travel upwards. Now this means that this bell crank on this side will be rotating that way and this bell crank on this side will be rotating that way. Now we can see from the direction of the movement that this top damper is not going to get loaded at all. So this is purely our heave damper and spring. In the meantime, on the bottom damper, our rotation of our bell crank has meant that it's compressing that way there and it rotates and compresses the other way there. Now this will cause this particular spring over here to be compressed and will act on this section of the damper along here. But what happens when we roll it the other way? If we go up this side and down that side, you can see that this bell crank will move that way, this bell crank will move that way, it will cause this end of the damper to move that way, 
and this end to move that way. Now this spring here cannot apply a tensile force. It can only apply a resistance in compression because you can see around here that this spring is not seated positively. You can't get tension out of that spring. So it's compression spring. If you look now, we have this secondary spring here. Now this spring is mounted at the bottom end to, to allow it to, to compress in that direction. And then the, the other end is mounted on this aluminium piece that's mounted to the bell crank. So what happens when this whole unit is pulled in tension is, is that what really is going on is the base of this whole damper structure pushes up against the spring which is retained by the other end of this aluminium piece here, the silver bit. And so we end up with the compression, the spring reacted there and there. So this side of the damper here reacts the roll in the opposite direction. So we have one spring for roll on one side, one spring damper for roll on the other side. I'm going to hazard a guess that this shaft running through the center here is probably the same for both ways, as we can damp uh, effectively on both sides with the single damping shaft. It's just the springs that can only react the force in one direction or the other. These ports here then allow us control of the active damping. In the case of single wheel bump, what happens is, let's say this wheel gets pushed up here and this bell crank over here is all fixed solid. Uh, what will happen is this bell crank here obviously rotates and we'll end up with a partial activation of both. So this will pull that way, that will push that way, and so we'll end up with compression in this spring here, and we'll also end up with a compression in this spring down here. So it's a combined mode there. In terms of how they're managing their warp control then, I'd say they aren't doing a sort of fully independent warp-based system, and it's going to be working off this heave spring and damper and roll spring and damper setup. Now this front suspension structure is actually very interesting. Obviously the entire damper and bell crank arrangement is pretty much the same as the rear. But what's really fascinating is this outboard link here. The top arms are separate pickup points in the upright there and there. So as you rotate the steering, uh, what will happen is you'll end up with the, um, the geometry of the suspension changing. So the caster and the kingpin inclination angle will change as these two points move around each other. So down the bottom we have more or less the same setup, but the points are inverted from the top and the push rod connects to the front linkage. What they're trying to do is gain different sort of curves for different contact patch control. So the mechanical grip benefits must be pretty big if they've gone to the effort of employing such an unconventional setup. Perhaps some of that knuckle geometry is to try and get better contact patch behavior once you have the motors come into play and trying to manage how they put their power down to the ground. It should be noted that I can't see a steering arm here though. So it's most likely that that is in fact the steering arm pickup. Overall, there's an awesome suspension setup on this car for a road car. And I'm really interested to see how it goes in the mechanical grip stakes because I think it's going to be quite obscenely good. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, don't forget to click that like button. And leave a comment below on what you want to see from me next. Subscribe to my channel for more. And hopefully, I'll see you next time.